In this video, I'm going to be putting the flaps together, specifically the uh, right flap or the flap for the right wing. Um, so this is gonna involve a couple steps. First, I'm going to rivet together some nose ribs, including putting on some hinge brackets on these nose ribs. Uh, then I'm gonna kind of put these things, uh, attach these to the spar, which is this big long sucker right here. Then I'm gonna drop that onto the uh, leading edges of the flap. Um, and then finally, I'm going to put on the skins on the top and the bottom of, of for the flap, rivet those on, and then do the trailing edge. Uh, and I basically have to do that with Pro Seal, kind of let it set for a while and then rivet it, kind of like I did for the rudder. And you also got to do it for the ailerons and the elevators. So anyway, that's it. Um, I don't have anything else to say other than that. Uh, the flaps are pretty big um, and it's always fun to put the things together. So let's get started. finish riveting together the substructure for the right flap. Um, you can see in some of the areas it's little has some splotchy paint. Every time I found some uh, spot that I didn't quite cover with the Axo Primer, um, I hit with a little bit of this SEM Easy Coat, um, which is easy enough. Uh, next step, I got to put on these front leading edges. I'm going to kind of Clico it on and then put these in some uh, uh, a holder thing uh, and then rivet on the top skin. So that's what's up next.
So I have finished putting together most of the uh, right flap. So here it is. Uh, pretty big. All in all, it went together pretty easily. Um, there wasn't anything too tricky about it. Sometimes getting these rivets in here that are close to the hinge brackets are a little tricky. But for the most part, it went together all right. Um, I like doing the pulled rivets in the bottom. It made things a lot faster. I envy those people who put together airplanes that just use pulled rivets. But anyway, uh, it went together okay. Next thing I need to do, and pretty much the last thing I need to do on this, is I need to get the trailing edge wedge and put it in here. And that's gonna involve me getting some tank sealant, putting on the trailing edge wedge, stuffing it in here, then using some angle aluminum uh, to uh, keep it rigid and straight, just like I did with the horizontal stabilizer and rudder. Um, and uh, all in all, I think that should be uh, not too bad. So that's next up, and then I'm done. So I'm gonna get to uh, putting on this tank sealant on the uh, trailing edge and putting that in there. So that's what's up next. So I'm almost finished with the uh, flaps. Um, I, uh, the one of the last things that I had to do, which I didn't make a video of because it was kind of messy, is I basically had to put a uh, tank sealant on the trailing edge wedges uh, and then put these in, put the trailing edge wedges into the uh, trailing edge position on the flaps uh, and then uh, wait for it to cure. Um, I didn't take a video of doing that because if any of you ever make a plane or any do anything with tank sealant, you find it's really, really messy. And so I didn't want to have to worry about fiddling with the camera while I had tank sealant on my hands. In any case, I put the tank sealant, a thin layer of it on the trailing edge wedge, put it in the trailing edges, and then I got this uh, aluminum angle right here, and I drilled a hole for every, you know, corresponding rivet hole that there is in the trailing edge, and I clicked this to the flap uh, and let it cure. Uh, the advantage of doing this way, I've done this on the uh, 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 elevators, the rudder, um, and it worked really, really well. It, so far, it's worked really, really well on this too. Um, when I took this off after letting the tank sealant cure for about two weeks, the trailing edge is just perfectly, perfectly straight. So what I need to do today to finish this sucker up is I basically am going to first put rivets in, all the rivet holes, um, then get some back rivet tape on it, and then I'm gonna partially set each rivet using the back rivet gun. After each rivet is partially set, I'm gonna go through it one last time with the back rivet gun and set it the rest of the way. Um, I do have the Cleveland trailing edge dies for the pneumatic squeezer, um, and I like how that works reasonably well, but I've been getting really good results with just the back rivet gun. So I think I'm just gonna stick to the back riveting uh, gun on the, uh, this flap. So anyway, that's it. Put rivets in, partially set with the back rivet gun, then set the rest away with the back rivet gun. So I'm gonna get started on that. So that's it. I have finished making the uh, right flap. I've also done the left flap a little bit earlier. Overall, I'm happy with how it turned out. Uh, it's really lightweight, um, unlike your mom. And uh, generally, everything came together the way I think it should. Um, looking down the trailing edge, it's pretty dang straight. Uh, it's off maybe by 1 32nd when I put this angle up to it. Um, if I hold it flat on this side, on the other side, it's off ah, maybe by 1 32nd of an inch, which in one way is not so bad, but in another more accurate way, just drives me insane. Um, so this is the right flap. The left flap is pretty much perfect. Um, this flap has a few little very slight waves in it, which is probably normal, but drives me insane. Anyway, it's nothing I can do about it turned out well enough, so overall I'm happy with it. Anyway, that's it for this video. The next video I'll probably finish up the uh, ailerons um, and then we'll go from there. Anyway, that's it for now. <laughs>